my spiritual advisor, uh, Mr. Kern Dooley. Hello, friends and, uh, and gentlemen out there. Um, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, Blake and I are really going to truly dig into the Word of God. We are going to dig into the root causes of why you feel the way you feel. Uh, we want to make you feel like you are normal. You are normal. Let's just go ahead and say that right now. There is nothing wrong with you. It doesn't matter what your addiction is. It doesn't matter what your affliction is. I don't care if you're addicted to food, if you're addicted to porn, if you're addicted to drugs, if you're addicted to prescription drugs, if you're addicted to having sex with your wife. Hey, could be Jerry Springer. Could be watching the news at 5 o'clock and just thinking that the world is going to go to hell in a handbasket and we're all going to damnation. I don't care what it is. Our purpose is to, first of all, let you identify what the Scripture says, okay? This is the living, breathing Word of God. It was not until I started to ingest this book and beat it down that I started to understand that there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. That the guys that wrote this entire book, okay, we're talking about 2,018 years ago, which was just before, this is after death. Then there was the whole before Christ stuff, the whole Old Testament. These guys struggled with the same things that we struggle, all the way back to Adam and Eve. So we're talking thousands of years of people struggling with the same addiction, same issues, same outbursts of flesh. So what we want to do is we want to first help you to identify the flesh. I just want to get, first of all, before we get kicked off, Blake and I are at... Our, our physical place right now is at a place where monks reside, monks pray. This is holy ground that was donated to a group of men that have dedicated their life to prayer, to praying for the world, to praying for souls, to praying for priests, pastors, to praying for the Holy Spirit to stay alive and well within us. And um, there's a 1500 year tradition that is all around us right now as we're making this video. So we thought of a, an amazing setting to come out here and have our foundation of this addiction Jesus and our oath ministries where we're going to kind of combine these two things together to help people un first understand what is drug addiction. What is it? Are you really an addict? Do you really have to set yourself apart from the rest of the world? I say no. I say that this scripture right here proves that somebody who's 400 pounds that can't lose the weight, they're addicted to laced potato chips just like you are. So are they walking around claiming that they're an addict? No, they're not. So the first thing, I guess, is that we have to remove that label from our lives. Yes, be real. Yes, be real. I got an issue. But where am I going to turn? Am I going to turn to the guys at the AA meeting? Am I going to continue to turn to a doctor who keeps pumping me up full of medication? Or do we first want to identify what the flesh is. So before we even get started in what the flesh is, Blake and I had an incredible Bible study last night um, until almost midnight. And I want to take you all on something of what we kind of did. First of all, before we even get started in this, you believe that this is the Word of God. Maybe you're not a man of faith. Maybe you've been going to church for a long time. Maybe this is the first time that you hear about the Word of God in a long time. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was God. This is God. Every time you get into a setting, when you open up this book and you start to read it, you have an encounter and an appointment with God. Okay. Having said that, we understand that everything that I'm about to show you in this book is of God. When we turn to Galatians 5 and verse 19, Galatians 5 and verse 19, if you'd ever like to go, we want to challenge everyone to go through this list. Okay, Blake, mm -hmm. when we read this last night, mm -hmm. we said, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, all right, y'all ready to start checking some stuff off the list? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealous, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, rivalries, and like of the witch. When I heard that last night, 
um, and you'll learn more about both of our backgrounds and why we're actually experts in addiction medicine, not because we're experts and, and certified in addictive medicine, but because we both lived a very long periods of our life as addicts and hiding it from everybody and lying to be able to cover it. When I first uh, read that list, I'm like, man, that, that, was, uh, that was written a real long time ago, but I'm, I'm like 90% on that list. You know, depending on what period I was in my life and what I was doing and when I was doing it, like I, I have literally check, 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 check all the way across. And it put into perspective for me the sins of my flesh. And one of the reasons why I've been able to beat this and current 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 beat his addiction a different way than I beat my addiction. Both of us had to go to a rock bottom type place. And one of the purposes of this this uh, audio set is so that way you don't have to fall as far and as hard as we fell down to that place. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't believe that a person actually has to hit rock bottom, but I do believe that somebody has got to have crystal clarity for them to be able to start making decisions and they've got to own the truth. Mm. They have to start telling the truth. And this list last night uh, brought me back to that truthful place where it's like, man, that's, yeah, that's me. And so when somebody would ask me how I was doing back in the day and I would say, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Like there's nothing wrong. I'm doing good. But I'm lying. I'm not mm -hmm. doing good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. miserable inside. Yeah. I'm horrible inside. Yeah. I am sinning every single day. And, and back then, I didn't think of sin like sin. I didn't think that my flesh was... I was sedating myself. I was hiding from it. And so even the definition of sin or the definition of the flesh didn't mean anything to me then. So if you're catching this because somebody like referred it to you, if you saw us on our website or you're downloading the podcast or you're just trying something new, you know, your your brain, your mind, your life may not be ready yet for you to hear this message. What I'm telling you is open your heart right now. Pray to open your heart and receive the message. Receive the message that um, what Kern's about to continue to go through because even as, as last night, every time I hear it, but even as, as, as recent as 12 hours ago, I had a completely new perspective on my past based on where Kern took me in our Bible study. Keep going, man. So guys, listen. When somebody asks you, how are you doing? And you say good. The truth is, is the reason why you say good is because you don't want to say that you're an addict. Okay, because you're just, you have literally said that so many times that you have now just accepted that as a part of your being and as a part of who you are. But addict is a whole different definition. It's almost like opening the door to a palace inside of your house, inside of your mind. So just by saying addict, now we then turn the knob and open it up into a place inside of our mind that is uh, abuse from a child, emotional abuse, physical abuse, um, whatever, past relationships that you may have broken up on, uh, a girl that hurt you in high school, bullies that teased you when you were a child. When we say addict, we are overlooking all of those underlying issues that are literally the fire and the fuel to fuel our addiction. And so by just saying good, by not saying addict, maybe everything that we have compiled into this little Tupperware and we have taken a marker, a Sharpie marker, and just written addict on the lid of that Tupperware. But the truth is, is when we peel that lid off of it, what's inside of that Tupperware is a whole bunch of mess. And for me, I didn't even know where to start to even describe my problem. So what I did is I passed the way everything in my life through the filter of Galatians 5 and verse 19. Why? Because it gives you a starting point. It gives you that rock. It gives you something to say, hey, if you can't define it, you can't defeat it. Let's repeat that. If I can't define my problem, I can't even go see a counselor. What you're going to walk in and say, counselor, uh, I'm a drug addict. Okay, well, all right, well, uh, why? How long have you been doing drugs? Is that really the target of our focus? Are we just, all we're going to do is they're going to give us another form of medication to suffice whatever's going on, whether it's Suboxone or Adderall or uh, antidepressants, they're going to give you something. So, so if you're, if you're a parent out there and you are trying to figure out uh, if you're, you know, and you lived a sheltered life and you know, you, 
you skip the 70s or the 80s and and uh, and even the 90s and the 2000s somehow some way you got unscathed and, and you're wondering if your kid is smoking smoking dope or you're wondering how them smoking marijuana uh, can lead them to um, abusing cocaine or quite possibly uh, smoking crystal meth or quite possibly shooting up heroin um, the, your worry is real and it's it's not because of a um, uh, the gateway drug like it's it opens you up to wanting more. The way I look at it is, it opens you up to a lifestyle. It opens you up to people who are sharing a similar lifestyle and have actually sharing similar pain. What happens is addicts basically kind of cohabitate and they mingle and they live in community, and they have these agreements between each other and it. I was a football player in college and I was a football player in high school, but I still had a whole other set of friends that were all experimenting with dangerous drugs. And we shared something. We were missing something from our childhood. We were missing something. We were you know, sexually abused or um, we, we had parents that worked all the time. We had parents, uh, my, my parents didn't, um, didn't physically or sexually abuse me, but some of them did. But regardless, we were trying to sedate ourselves. We were trying to put um, a painful experience in the past down. We didn't know how to process it and nobody was talking to us about how to process that. So what modern medicine is doing now is people are waking up at 26 years old. They're waking up at 36 years old. They're waking up and they're saying, I don't want to be on my medicine anymore or I don't want to use this illegal medication anymore. And this could be literally, if you have a, a teenager that uh, you just found out has been abusing their medication, the doctors will put them on another medication. And what ends up happening is you're just controlling an addiction. Go deeper. Go into the Tupperware. And, and go into the actual problem. Go into the pain of the past. As a parent, you got to be strong enough to want to take your kid's hand and go into their darkness and go into their pit with them and ask them why. Ask them why. It's so important. And then listen. And then don't take offense if they say it's because of you. That's the big thing right there, Blake. I believe you're on it. You're on it right there, parents. The big thing is that, hey, Blake, were you hurt as a child? Did I beat you? Did I abuse you? Did I come across as being angry? Yeah, mom, you used to scare me a lot when you would get mad and yell at me. Well, what do you mean I used to yell at you? What? And then all of a sudden, they're right back into a very vulnerable place. And so is it okay as a parent to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I used excessive force. Maybe I was a little hard on you, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive. Please forgive me for being hard on you. As a parent, not being going into it with a mind frame of, he better not say I. He better. I'm telling you right now. You better... Why? Because all of a sudden, this child, this person, this... And, and the truth is, is a drug addict typically is a child in a man's body who has an issue. He goes to work. He has a, he has a, a role in society. But deep down inside, he's a wounded child. And so he medicates himself because he has to put on his big boy pants and go to work. And so what happens is, is here comes performance enhancing drugs. I need Adderall. I need testosterone. I need something to either numb the pain or make me forget about it. Why do you think alcoholism... Is such a big thing because it's liquid courage because all of a sudden you have this courage that comes from nowhere because I'm I don't know that if I'm good enough to make it in society because my my uh, my, my self-worth has been chopped down and so I think Blake you're really on to something right here when when parents do it, 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 it it's really going down to the root issue not hey buddy do you have a drug addiction Man, why do you feel why why don't you feel valuable in society, buddy? To, just to just just realize when you when you engage uh, your 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 child, your brother, your sister, your mom, your wife, your husband doesn't matter. The truth needs no defense, and so if they are speaking truth to you and you feel like you have to defend yourself, you got to really think about where you're coming from when trying to help somebody with an addiction because. When they start speaking truth, it's the hardest thing for addicts to do because we lie. It's the, the whole game is about lies. The whole game is about cover-ups. And when, you, when your brain is controlled by a substance um, and it starts to take control over you, you, you literally you lie to everybody. 
And if you're an addict out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You play games. You lie to the doctor. You lie to your boss. You lie to your wife. You lie to your mom. You, you literally, your job is to lie. And you become very manipulative. So when you go out then and you say, okay, here's my moment. I'm going to go ahead and tell the truth. And they get slapped back. It, it ends up setting them back even further. Um, and so being able to cultivate the truth and being able to live for the truth and being able to accept the truth, first of all, if you're going to engage somebody and try to help them, you got to be prepared to hear some truth on yourself. You also got to be prepared to hear some lies. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to just be calm and be still and just be able to operate from a place of integrity. Mm -hmm. And that's the key is when you're coming from a place of integrity, when you're talking with somebody that has these issues and these problems, you could have been the one who actually caused the issues or the problems. I know for a fact that I've caused a ton of issues and problems in my family. I know that I've led my cousins down a path because, as Kern was saying earlier, um, a guy who is is you know using is a leader and is um, dangerous, and people gravitate towards them, and people gravitate towards them because it's the cool thing to do, and so we have very dynamic leaders right now that are attaining power in these little games and in these little circles. And because they're in high school or even whenever they're in college, they have control over the drugs. Mm -hmm. Then they actually have this, you know, it's like being a CEO of your own company, but you're 22 years old. Mm -hmm. And there's commerce and there's money and there's girls and there's friendships and there's parties and there's mm -hmm. a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to put that stuff down whenever you get a taste of it. And again, it's because it's exciting. It's that, it's like, it's that cheap. It's that adventure. It's that yeah, you're adventure. on an adventure. I mean, that's the whole thing. And just to kind of give you a place of where I come from, I was an ugly little redheaded kid, and I got bullied. And then I hit my growth spurt, and I became very good in, in uh, athletics. And uh, I noticed that I got attention from having this angry spirit of football and, and knocking people down and having this, this power trip. Well, what do you think doing illegal drugs and having illegal drugs in my pocket, pocket meant? I was doing things that nobody was willing to do, that I was, I was on an adventure that nobody was willing to take. I was um, sneaking around behind the law, and it gave me this sense of power inside of my pocket. It gave me this sense of power when I puffed on marijuana or whatever it was that I did. It gave me a sense of power when I was able to start making money in high school and a lot of money and start selling drugs. And so the truth of it is, is that I was a wounded kid who was just looking for a false sense of security and power because I didn't have a parent that would nurture that area of my life and really come to me and seek, hey man, what's going on? What went on? And start asking the right questions and not necessarily getting offended whenever the answer truly did come out. So what you start to learn as a young kid is you start to fabricate lies so that you don't have to tell your parents the truth. And then because you're... I mean, if you could lie to your parents, do you think you can lie to a girl of interest? Mm. Absolutely. I mean, you're going you're gonna to lie to your teacher. You're going to lie to your coach. You're going to lie. If you, could, if you could pull the wool over your parents' eyes, then you can lie to anyone in the world. So I think the goal of this ministry is to first not start to pick and poke at all of your wrongs, all of your issues, because what we're actually trying to prove is that every single one of us if we truly take Galatians 5 and verse 19 and we run a filter and we write down all of those things, you can just Google it, Galatians 5 and 19, and you write down all of those things inside of there. And we'd like to see your comments. We'd like to hear what you have to say. We'd like for you to ask questions. We'd like, we would love that. We would like to be able to send you some kind of uh, documentation, some kind of format, some kind of literature on exactly what the desires of the flesh are so that you would understand that your first target is not to fight drug addiction. It is to identify where your flesh is out of control. We just sat down with a monk over here, and he told us some of the desires of his flesh as a monk. We, it doesn't matter what level of spirituality yeah. you're on. It doesn't matter at all. Everybody has some type of struggle. Some people just like sweet potato pie. I mean, that's their... I just I love eating Little Debbie cakes. Dude, fudge rounds, huh? Put a star crunch in the microwave for about five seconds. Man, look, that's, that's an, that right there. It doesn't matter what it is. And so if we really get honest with ourselves, there are some issues in our life that we cannot conquer. Why? 
because it was designed for us to have free will first. Secondly, because we need the Holy Spirit's help in conquering the issues in our life, which is why we're here so that we can start to grow spiritual muscle and be aware of our spirit man and allow the prayers, influence of the word of God and the Holy Spirit to give us the muscle that we need and the obedience that we need to overcome the desires of the flesh. This is something that, I, that, that was like mind blowing for me whenever I started reading and I started really kind of filling my spiritual cup up because I'm brand new at this. I'm really brand new at, 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 at reading the Bible. Uh, I'm 37 years old. Uh, I've run multi-million dollar companies for the last decade and I've read probably 150 books. None of them were the Bible. None of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, had the, look, the game plan of how to live your life right there. Uh, Jesus Christ comes, suffers, and dies for us. Go to church my entire life. Go on retreats. Uh, do, do a Christia. Go on silent retreats. Um, never read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Catechism, but never actually read the Bible. And even, again, even as, 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 as recent as last night, one of the things that I took away from our Bible study uh, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. The Holy Spirit took Jesus' hand, basically, and led him into the desert. So the Spirit led him into the desert. And, and what I got from that, my takeaway was that, you know, God, God has led me to where I am to be exactly who I am in this moment. And in all those opportunities, I think I had plenty of opportunities to be able to accept Him and for me to change the, my, my patterns and my behaviors. Um, but I needed to know what I know now. Even to be able to do this podcast, even to be able to do this audio set, I needed to know all of that because there's nothing about addiction. There's nothing about being addicted to pornography or, 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 or sex or drugs or making money, business, telling lies, doing deals, good deals, bad deals, traveling the world. Like I've 100% had a full range of capacity in those areas. And so I can connect with people who've lost children because I've lost children. I can connect with people who've lost friends because I've lost friends and have experienced pain. The Holy Ghost was with me through all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thing whenever you are addicted and you feel like you're not actually worthy of God's love. And that's the number one thing that I hear from addicts and the number one thing that I hear from people who are in pain. They say, I'm not worthy. God doesn't love me. Why? How could he? And now my answer is, how could he not? He's always been with you. Mm -hmm. He's never not been with you. In fact, he was the tour guide. Mm -hmm. He was there before you. He literally, like, you followed him there. The crazy part is that you thought that you were all alone the entire time. And if you would actually open your eyes and realize he never left you. Never left. He was always there. And so now today in this moment, you get to make a decision if you want to join him or not. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Is You literally now get to decide, do I want to go ahead and know more? Do I want to learn more? Do I want to master my flesh and my body? Do I want to have a better relationship with Jesus and with my relationship with God? Do I want to have a better relationship with my children? Do I want to be the leader in my house? Do I want to wear my crown inside of my home? Do I want to have a business that is full of purpose instead of just chasing profits? And so remember this, that wherever you're at, doesn't matter how dark the pit is, that there's the ability for you to be able to turn on the light. So, uh, exactly what Blake is saying, y'all. Um, if you read in Matthew um, 4, this is where Jesus is tempted to go into the desert. So, Jesus is baptized, and then right after he is baptized, he goes into the desert. That The first thing it says is that Jesus was led by the Spirit, capital S, Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit of God, into the desert. So, could it be that you're a kid, or you are, right where God needs you to be right now. But the only reason why you're stuck in the rut is because you're not looking at the way that Jesus defeated Satan. And so Jesus said three times, when three times he was challenged in his uh, worldview and his thought process by Satan, he says, it is written, it is written, it is written. So how do we feed the voice of accusers? With the word of God. And the sad truth is, is that we as drug addicts have hurt so many people in our lives 
that we hear their voice echoing inside of our mind. First of all, we have the hurts and hangups from whenever we were young, the bullies and everything else. Then we have on top of that, it gets deeper. Um, when you hurt your mom, she says some nasty things about you. When you hurt other people, they say other nasty things about you. And the more you continue to hurt people, they start to say nasty things about you. And it's not until you actually open up this book and you start to listen to what the Word of God says. Believe the Word of God. And first of all, invite the Holy Spirit into your life to come and help you and give you some kind of assistance. Why do I say that? Because in Galatians 5 and verse 19, it talks about the desires of the flesh. But if we fast forward to Galatians 5 and verse 22, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And so if we want to combat the desires of the flesh in our life, we have to invite the Holy Spirit into our life. Why am I telling you that? Because in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so you want to receive power. Why wouldn't you? Are you so sick and tired of beating your head on a wall and making some bonehead mistakes? I was. And it wasn't until I first told the truth about myself. I am screwing up royally in these areas right here. I'm horrible in relationships. What was the, what was the moment? What was the moment where you were like, I'm tired of it? I hurt my family, man. 